So we're going to talk about cellular respiration today. And uh, one thing to remember, what you care about here is what goes in and what comes out of each step. Okay, I'm going to give you an overview. Then I'm going to briefly go through the major steps. And we're really going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation. Because if you can understand oxidative phosphorylation and chemiosmosis, you will get it. So let's start with uh, the overview. <coughs> there are three stages. The first stage is called glycolysis, and it happens, this over here is the mitochondria in a cell. So we're looking at over here, this stuff over here is cytoplasm. Okay, in, in the cell, glucose and glycolysis, the basic essential thing that happens here is glucose is turned to pyruvate with a construction of a couple of ATPs. Okay, pyruvate is a molecule that can diffuse into the mitochondria. Once it does that, it enters something called the citric acid cycle. So pyruvate is actually broken up glucose, passes into the citric acid cycle, where the glucose is broken down, or the, sorry, pyruvate is broken down. Step by step by step, and ATP is produced. Now there's an important thing that we're missing. Also in the, also in the mitochondria, oxidative phosphorylation happens. The two parts of oxidative phosphorylation are electron transport and chemiosmosis. We'll come back to those. Notice here it says electrons carried by NADH and electrons carried by NADH and FADH2. Remember we said yesterday that energy is in the electrons. And if that's true, then when you break down glucose, and we'll go through the detail of this in a minute, when you break down glucose, glucose, when you break that chemical bond, those electrons have to be, that energy is taken, those electrons are carried by something called NADH. NADH, you can read about this in your textbook if you wish, is actually an ion called NAD plus, nucleotinamide, I can't remember the name, it's not that important. A hydrogen and a couple of electrons are removed, so this goes from being positively charged to being neutral, which means it's reduced. Okay, it's reduced and it's carrying high energy electrons. That's what you need to know, same with these things. Okay, let's skip ahead and let's talk about each stage a minute. Okay. Glycolysis. Glycolysis harvests energy by oxidizing glucose to pyruvate. Remember, oxidizing synonym, almost synonym, is burning. Okay? We say we burn energy, but we really oxidize it. Okay, in burning, heat and light is released. In oxidiza oxidization, I think that said that right, oxidation, they're not. Just heat. Okay? Major thing to know. Glucose is broken down to pyruvate. It happens in the cytoplasm. This is not important. I want to show you, though, this because you have to understand that in order to take a glucose molecule, which is this ring structure, and break it apart, you have to put energy in. There's a little bit of that's a little bit of an endergon. I'm sorry, that's a that's a reaction where you have to put energy in to break the bond. Sugar is not just going to sit there and be broken down. So you put a little energy in in the form of ATP. But when you're all done, you're going to net ATP, you're going to net 2 ATP, you're going to net 
2 pi root of 8, which is essentially this broken in half. And the other thing you're going to net are two NADH molecules carrying high energy electrons. Okay, now the details of it are this. Okay, this picture is in your book, and I invite you to refer to it. This shows the 10 steps. There's an enzyme for each step. We've talked about this before. That every, this is a metabolic pathway with 10 steps. You are going to need to know the steps. That's for higher level biochemistry classes. Not that important for this one. But look at the, the thing I want you to recognize is the absolute phenomenal complexity, I think. of this process, the phenomenal complexity of this process, that it's actually 10 in a row, 10 reactions that happen one after the other, the other, the other, the other, the other, the other that use an enzyme for each one. That's all you need to know about that. Then, uh, the citric acid or Krebs cycle can begin. Now remember, pyruvate Pyruvate has to get into the mitochondria. Let me go back a minute. Sorry if this is confusing on the video. Pyruvate has to get into the mitochondria. And in order to do that, and this isn't that important of a step unless you want some extra points on a on a uh, essay or something, it's converted to something called acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the link between glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. And there's this big picture in your textbook of a chemical reaction. The key is that pyruvate goes in through its facilitated diffusion into the mitochondria. So if there's a low level of pyruvate in here and a high level out here, it will go in. This is one control means of your cell. Citric acid cycle also, Krebs cycle takes place within the mitochondria. We've been over that. Here's the, what it does. It takes pyruvate, generates one ATP, three of those energy-containing NADH, and one other energy-containing FADH2. So what goes in? Pyruvate. Two of them per glucose. For every one pyruvate, you get one ATP, three NADH, and one FADH2. The other thing that's produced, and this is not really shown, it's not really talked about here, but what else is given off by the Krebs cycle is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a byproduct. What happens to carbon dioxide? We breathe it out. We breathe it out. Okay, that's waste. One gets removed right away when it enters the mitochondria. The other one gets removed in the Krebs, the other two get removed in the citric acid or Krebs cycle. Okay? Again, look at the complexity of the process. Eight chemical reactions, each with an enzyme, turning, taking the carbon pyruvate, converting it, breaking off electrons. Breaking off carbon dioxide as waste, making an ATP. Incredible. So, what have we made so far? We've made NADH2 and FADH2. Those electrons, what are these again? These are electron carriers. These are electron carriers. Here it says it right here. These two electron carriers donate electrons to something called the electron transport chain. And I'll go over all this again at the end. Which powers the creation, synthesis, the making of ATP via this. Okay? Writing that down in your notes, I don't know is that important, but making sure you understand that is. And we'll come back again. We'll go over this whole thing again at the end. The electron transport chain is in the crystal. I'm going to go through this here. Okay. On 
this slide, this picture. We're in the part of the mitochondrion that's right here. Okay? What's called the criste of the mitochondrion. Let me go back. I'm going to go back a ways. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Okay? The criste of the mitochondria is this area, between the outer and inner membrane. Stuck in that area, stuck in this membrane, are proteins. Proteins. I have to go back to the slide I was on. Okay? What happens is, these proteins get electrons and pass them from one to the next in a little step series of sort of chemical reactions. We say that these electrons fall because they're high energy here and low energy here. And when they're at their lowest energy state, they are picked up by oxygen, combined with hydrogen, to make water. Okay? So the high energy electrons end up in water, paired with oxygen to make water. Again, I'll detail this out in a minute. All right. This is the best diagram I can show you, the best diagram I can show you of this process. This is going to be a little bit confusing and I'm going to try to go slow. Here are the NADH and FADH dropping off their electrons. Their electrons pass, get passed along and what did we just say, they're going, I'm sorry, not here, they're going from a high energy state to a low energy state. And what happens to their energy? The energy of them is used to pump, pump hydrogen ions from inside the membrane. We're in this orange space here. If you look up here at the key, to pump hydrogen ions from inside, from this yellow space here to the intermembrane space. They're pumped. That means they're going from low concentration to high concentration. So the energy of the moving electrons, sort of like flowing water down in, over a dam, is pumping the hydrogen ions from here to here. Your question might be, where do those hydrogen ions come from? Well, remember that a hydrogen ion is equal to a proton. Those hydrogen ions came from the breakdown of C6H12O6. Okay, so far then, we have the NADH and FADH2 from, elect from the Krebs cycle and glycolysis. They were holding the electrons. They pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. Why? Well, remember, what we want to do here, let me go back, let me go and write up our equation a second, and this is, you can ignore this slide, I'm just trying to find a space to write this right now. Okay, ignore this slide. Our equation is that we took glucose plus oxygen broke it down to water, we've mentioned, CO2, which we've mentioned, plus ATP. We have to create ATP. ATP is created in a process. That process is called chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis. 
and it's happening right here. In a little protein called ATP synthase. ATP synthase. I'm going to go back a couple slides. This is in your textbook to show you what ATP synthase looks like. hydrogen ions are in the intermembrane space. Back upstream here, they were pumped they were pumped into the intermembrane space because of the passage of hydrogen ions down because of the, sorry, because of the passage of electrons downhill. Okay? There is energy provided to pump hydrogen ions from here out. Now they're all gathered up here and this is high concentration, and this is low concentration, so if they can, they're going to diffuse. And they can when they run into an A this picture is of an ATP synthase. And this thing is so cool I can't describe it for you, except to tell you that these hydrogen ions go down through here, and they spin this little thing that looks like a little motor, it's got a gear on the end that spins another little gear thing that when it spins phosphorylates ADP into ATP. This spinning motion, the spinning motion is enough energy to make an ATP and I think that's super cool. That's very, very cool. Okay? Osmosis is the diffusion of water that's what gets this confusing. Chemiosmosis is the term for the diffusion of hydrogen ions down this gradient, spinning the ATP, create or spinning the synthase, creating ATP. So to review, first stage is called glycolysis in the cytoplasm. You get pyruvate made, a couple ATP, and energy carriers like NADH. The NADH is going to go all the way into the mitochondria and go to electron transport chain. The pyruvate pass into the citric acid cycle. More NADH and FADH are created by ripping apart the pyruvate. What's not shown on here is the production of CO2. And what we just talked about, electron transport and chemiosmosis makes most of the ATP. Pump the electrons, pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space, let them diffuse back in through the synthase, creating ATP. I super highly recommend that you find the time to go to the textbook website and go to the BioFlix on cellular respiration. It's in chapter 9. Super cool animation of what I've just tried to describe to you.